Tell you what, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. Yeah, uh, that's a little bit of a high energy morning for sure. I hope that the start of your day is amazing. You guessed it, we are feeding some animals and getting to know your animals is very important. Obviously Casper is a lot different animal than let's say Sunrise. We all know my girl Sunrise here is a sweetheart. When you take her out, she's incredible. The fact that is interesting about her is when she smells rabbit, she is actually pretty ferocious, but she doesn't like to eat pigs and other food. So you gotta kinda know your animals each animal is different right and even an absolutely amazing animal like sunrise here can really be something that you have to be a little bit careful of if you have something that she really loves like this right here but again you can see she's not too ferocious she's not like Casper right I can sit this close and I don't have to be like whoa dodging strikes and stuff like that and that's kind of the whole thing is that each animal is an individual right you know not all albino Burmese are like sunrise not all black-eyed Lucy's are like Casper it's kind of an individual thing we're all individuals right right? Well, so are they. So when you get a new snake, that's one of the things that's exciting about it is getting to learn their personality, not only through handling, but also feeding. And of course, you guys remember we brought over this new beautiful albino reticulated python. And this is the first time that I'm actually feeding her in this enclosure. So I really don't even know what's going to happen, to be honest. She seems interested. Oh, yep, she took it. So that's an interesting thing. I actually expected this to be a much more kind of violent type of strike, just with the way she's acting and stuff like that. But it was actually a little bit soft. And again, that goes back to my point about, you know, this is a reticulated python. Casper's a reticulated python. Night Fury's a reticulated python. Perdita is a reticulated python and all four of those animals are radically different right and that's just kind of how it is and sometimes you can actually see that there's a little bit of an attitude that is kind of to a particular morph that happens from time to time sometimes albinos are tamer than let's say melanistic animals but the truth is is it's not always that way right you know you can have individuals that are completely different uh, take for instance night fury that one is a handful and speaking of night fury here comes night fury come on over here over here Ball, ball, ball. Whoa! Hoo, hoo, hoo. All right, right down here, right down here. There you go. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, you know, this ball training is working really well, you know. Definitely now when I don't have the ball and I open the cage, very rarely does it get hyper. You know, every now and then it does, but the majority of the time the ball is really good. Where I'm going with this training, I'm not 100% sure. You know, I know I want to get it to the point where Night Fury only strikes out at food when it sees the blue ball. That's already established. But what can we do next with it? I'm not sure. I keep on thinking, what can I use this for? How can I actually use this in some sort of display when people are here at the public or something like that let me know in the comments what you think about it because like I said I've been racking my brain and although it's really cool to see him follow the ball and it's certainly protecting us when we're taking him out for the public him not thinking we're food uh, I feel like there's something more that I'm missing here so I need your suggestions taking a quick break to actually pack a snake that is gonna hurt to send out I'm not gonna lie to you I have a trio 1.2 so a male and two females of the super lorry leopard ball pythons and uh, I tell you what you know that I have to be getting something really good to get get rid of this animal not money wise we're doing a trade and uh, so tomorrow I'm going to be unboxing what's coming on the other side of this animal here I tell you what I'm going to shed a little tear getting rid of this thing but uh, I'm going to be so happy to get these animals so make sure to tune in tomorrow and you'll find out why someone could pry a super lorry leopard out of my hands which uh, trust me took a lot of convincing to do is actually deep in shed right now. As a matter of fact, the other day, you gotta remember that they were actually almost locked up. Just before he went into shed, he started wrapping tails with her. So I have a feeling when he sheds out, they're gonna breed this time. And of course, Ivy is always ready to eat. And again, she's a pretty aggressive feeder. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a pig, a rat, a rabbit, doesn't matter. So today she's gonna get a little rabbit. Here you go, girl. Here you go, sweetheart. Here you go. Come on, baby. There you go. There you go. 
There you go. Ah, oh, oh, there you go, sweetheart. And we'll just go ahead and let her take it right in the water because she's eventually going to do that anyways. That's where she likes to eat. She's got it right on the head, so hopefully she'll just go ahead and eat it. This girl is so weird because sometimes she'll just let go and it'll take her like a half hour, 45 minutes before she actually starts to eat again. But nevertheless, Ivy is amazing. I mean, just look at that absolutely stunning animal. And the fact that these guys were locked up or almost locked up, I mean, literally the whole coil of tails and stuff like that, it tells me that there's a good chance these guys are gonna be breeding here in the next couple weeks. So I couldn't be more excited about that. Could you imagine baby Ivy and Aries? Is, whoo, I tell you what, that's gonna be awesome. My guy Snaz here certainly knows it's feeding time and this was another interesting animal when it came to figuring it out. When I first got it from my friend Rhonda, uh, she had had it for years and it was a really interesting, awesome, beautiful, habituated, socialized animal, but it didn't eat really well for us. It liked rats, but it would only eat once in a while and at one point it went off food for like six months. And then interestingly enough, when I started getting frozen thawed pigs, I found out that Snaz loves frozen thawed pigs. So again, it's just kind of figuring out your particular animal Animal. Hey Snazzy, what's up bud? Right here, right here. Oh, whoa, oh, got, that got a little close to my hand. I'm not gonna lie to you. The problem was, is I was on this side. I couldn't see where his face was. And when he struck, it was about four inches from my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, a little bit of a bad thing. Normally he hits it right on the face, which means I have lots of room. But in this particular case, uh, it was a little closer than I'd like it to get, to be honest with you. But again, learning this animal was really important to me. Right now he eats every single week, as long as I give him a frozen thawed pig. If I try a rabbit, doesn't want it. If I try a rat, once in a blue moon he eats it, but he crushes food now, so that's pretty awesome. Again, uh, it's, it's that's what makes it exciting, right? Is getting to know each individual animal, figuring out what it is that makes them tick and keeps them happy. Let's go ahead and walk right in this cage to Sunfire. Hey Sunfire, you want some food? Come on. She is starting to go opaque a little bit, but it looks like she still might eat one last meal before she sheds. You wanna eat, girl? Come on. There you go, girl. <laughs> Again, amazing, and it's cool. I love the fact that we have enclosures like this where I can literally walk inside and get this close to the animal. It's just, a, it's a different feel, right? You know what I mean? Through most of my career, I had to, you know, they were in cages where you just open the door and you feed them and stuff like that. Now I can literally, I mean, look at this. I'm just inside her enclosure, love it. It's got the, the little faux waterfalls coming down the rocks. I mean, it's just, ah, I just tell you guys, I love this place so much. and. An animal like Sunfire here in this enclosure where she hangs up here all the time, crawls around, just makes me happy. There's this Australian YouTuber, okay? Yeah. And he doesn't wear a shirt, and he has a mullet, and he catches huge wild monitor litters, guanas, lizards yeah. and stuff. Guanas. Guanas? That's what they call them, guanas. All right. Guana. But, I mean, they're, they're huge, yeah. all right? And he's catching them. And baby juice isn't, except he's baby juice. Like, baby cook. he's not even baby, baby juice. Baby juice. Baby juice. Baby juice. Uh, yeah. That's what I mean. He's a little guy. It's not much. Well, if you want to go and get see how close, just don't get bit. I'm not going to get bit. What's the worst that happened? <laughs> what's the matter? No, what's going on? What are you thinking? Oh, he's coming, know. man. He's coming. <laughs> He's coming. He's coming okay, for you. Okay, so can I ask an expert? Yes. So in my opinion, it didn't look like he was going to bite me. He just he wanted wants to food. explore. He wants food. He wants food. He smells food in the air. We're feeding mm. today. So really bad so idea. So grab a, grab a tong real quick. Bad idea. Bad, bad idea. Back in. I agree. Where's the mouse? See, I touched him. Did you see that? Like it's a very athletic lizard, isn't I it? I know, I know. But it's not. That's that's no Argamas Prime. Ooh, that gets your uh, B RPM up there. You know? <laughs> Holy cow! He wants more too. I know he wants more, but that's all Swallow he's getting right now. Swallow the tail down, boy. I know, right? Good job. God, Look at—he's still got the tail in there. He's not even he swallowed it. He's looking for more. I just want to hold him one day. We're gonna get it there. We're oh, we'll get him there. there. We'll get him. Trust me, we will. I saw a baby tame one. They were petting its chin and its lips. That's what I want. Moo 
who's gonna get a rabbit, really I typically feed her frozen pigs. I don't know that I've ever actually even fed her a rabbit to be totally honest with you, so I'm not sure what's gonna happen here. And of course she's got that weird overbite ever since she was a baby. But I don't know if she likes this rabbit. She's like, I've never smelled this before, Dad. And again, this is just little things that we have to learn to see if she wants it. She may very well not take it. Doesn't look like she's interested. Again, interesting, right? How Perdita loves rabbits and uh, Moo Moo has no interest in it whatsoever. So we'll have to thaw out a frozen pig. You know, again, each animal's individual. You just saw it happen right here for the first time. First time I offered her a rabbit, no interest in it whatsoever. Al Machino's another one that we had to kind of figure out. You know, he was a good feeder, but he didn't like rabbits at all. But he is totally into frozen pigs. I mean, he'll eat as many of these as I give it to him. I'm going to give him a couple today, to be totally honest with you, just to bulk them up pretty good. Because, you know, some animals just have a higher metabolism. That's the other thing that you have to keep in mind. Some animals, if you fed a four-pound meal to once a week, would start to get kind of overweight, to be honest with you. And other animals need more like six or eight pounds. So, you know, it's not a blank slate. And that's what I keep on trying to preach to everybody. It's like, you know, read your animals. You know, if it's looking like it's a little fat, then back off the food a little bit. Looking a little thin, up the food a little bit. Eventually, you'll find that level where your animal has the perfect body weight and holy cow does Perdita look amazing in this enclosure for sure and she actually she'll eat anything she'll eat rabbits she'll eat rats she'll eat pigs you can see she took that no problem at all and she's such a sweetheart you know she doesn't have that aggressive strike like Casper and some of the other animals I mean just a gentle take sometimes she just opens her mouth and takes it so she's incredible and again I love this enclosure and I love the opportunity for her to climb even more than she did in her other enclosure we see her up here on the branches all the time all over the place so I know she's absolutely loving this enclosure and I love seeing her here back at it again feeding the colubrids uh, tis the season to where literally I feel like I do it every day but with twice a week it feels like every day because it's almost every other day <laughs> but that being said things are going pretty good in here uh, this year we moved into a new room so that has been challenging and interesting because it's the first time so we're figuring out temperatures playing these funny games with these little oil heaters that I'm moving around trying to make sure everything's warm enough. Anybody in Michigan knows and understands that this time of year it's hot, it's cold, it doesn't know what it is. So we're still playing that game, trying to get everything good. But I think it's dialing in pretty good. Gonna go ahead, give this week's first feeding, and then hopefully today I can get my breeding list together. So I gotta inventory everything I have and then figure out a breeding scheme and rearrange to do that. So this should be a pretty busy, exciting, and hopefully a fruitful week. I've never really tried to get Ivy to come over for food before, so I'm gonna see if I can do it. Come on, girl. I would love to train her like this where I could get her to come over. I have no idea if I'm gonna be able to do it or not, so I, uh, let me see what I can do here. Hmm, come on, girl. Come on, girl. Here you go, come on, girl. Come on, girl. Here she comes, here she comes. Oh, she's coming up. She's coming up, she's coming up. Here she is. Yes! <laughs> How awesome was that? I didn't know if that could actually work, but that worked out absolutely amazing. All right, snap and pop time. Come on, these are actually pretty big meals for these guys. I usually feed them a little bit smaller meal, but they're starting to get pretty big now. So kind of up in the meal size just a little bit. And of course, pop is over here. Come on, bud. Come on. There you go, bud. And one of the things that's interesting is both these animals look like they are actually starting to just start to go into shed too. So uh, it's, you know, it's a cycle, right? We see probably because we feed the same every week, all the animals seem to be in similar cycles with shed. So these guys will probably be opaque in the next couple days. Tons of the other animals are going opaque. Some stuff just came out of shed and that's something that we see, you know, it just seems like the cycle happens where the whole place is shedding almost at the same time. And the last animal that needs to eat is Jeffrey and he is certainly not a super calm 
striker. Although he was really good that time. Usually when he comes out, he's like, woo hoo. So when he was coming out to my leg, I'm thinking, I might not be in the best spot right here. But uh, it's always awesome feeding the Reptarium. I mean, I do it every single week, but it never gets old. Seeing these animals thrive like this is what I live for, and I'm so excited about it. And that's the whole reason why we're only open three days a week, right? Is so that the animals have four days off where they can chill out, we can do some training with them. We can also feed them, let them digest their food and chill. So uh, it's always amazing here, and it's one of my favorite days of the week. that has a bunch of animals knows that every now and then you got an extra rodent that you thought out and that's just because a couple things were in shed so I'm gonna go ahead and try to give Bowser a really nice rat meal normally I give him maybe a medium rat but every now and then a good meal like this might be really good for him so we'll just see if we can lure him out a little bit come on buddy come on bud here he comes oh yeah he's ready oh yeah Woo -hoo -hoo, doggy. I tell you what, how awesome is that? Bowser was on fire today, and that's it, guys. That wraps up this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed feeding videos, here's a playlist of me feeding tons of animals. You can just roll through that. Up here, you can actually subscribe to my podcast channel if you don't mind. Over here, we're less than 20,000 away from 3 million. Hit that subscription button. Turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.